I don't, can't even see what my time thing is here. It is 6.30 p.m. on Monday, February 1st. And I'd like to uh, call to order the meeting on Commission on Disabilities. Um, and first we'd like to do is take a roll call of the people that are here um, for the members. So Lynn Valancourt, present. Uh, Crystal Evans? I'm present. Mary? Present. And Robin Torpe? Present. Okay. And is um, just for... Just, I know Mary Beth, you're here. Christina, are you here also? I'm here, sorry. Okay. My <laughs> arrow is turning into a hand and I don't know why. <laughs> That's okay. I just might, so, I wasn't sure if I just had, had a name or, or you were actually there or just waiting for no, me. No, I'm here. I, yeah, my when I clicked on the link, Zoom was updating. So now all of a sudden it's a hand. So I don't I don't know what's happening. Okay. All right. And uh, hi, Greg. Hi, welcome. Okay, so what we're going to be doing on um, the first item is I know on um, on the meeting minutes that we um, we received the minutes. However, because we weren't sure if we were going to be getting the minutes um, in time um, for the meeting or having them printed out, they were not listed on the agenda. So unfortunately, we're not able to vote on anything that is not on the agenda. So while we have the while we did get the minutes in our um, in our meeting, we can't vote on them or accept them um, because we we didn't have them on the agenda. So that's just a matter of course and just letting everybody know that uh, um, that I won't be taking a vote on the minutes of the meeting. We'll table that until the next um, until the next uh, meeting. Okay. Thank you. Well, I mean, we'll make sure that they're on the next agenda. We weren't sure that the recording secretary was able to get them to us this evening. So once she did, we sent them to you so you'd have them, but we'll make sure they're on the agenda for the next meeting. Great. Um, okay, so I'm um, calling to order. And the first item that we're going to do is just take a look over at um, finances. So Mary Beth, if you can give us a quick update. Sure. So between the last meeting that um, when I spoke about the finances in this meeting, there has been an increase of $2,405 into the account. So the present balance in the handicap parking fines account now is $50,264.70. Thank you. Um, and now um, the, big, the big topic of the evening again is the uh, continuation of the discussion for the Sunset Lake. So everybody um, should have received a, um, a computer drawing, which actually engineering was able to get pretty quickly. We did not, we weren't able to get comments from them on certain things, um, but everybody on your computer should have received and I'll hold it up so you can see which one it is. Yep. It was a drawing that um, got sent in along with, um, along with a summary of um, accessibility improvements estimate. Um, and that was sent by uh, Christina to all of us um, just a little while ago. Um, and so what I do want to make a note of is that there are several things that are a little bit different um, from the uh, drawing or the draft drawing that I had sent out to people um, a little while ago in between the two meetings. Um, and so I do want to recognize that there are differences between those drawings and mention what they are. But as of this point, we do not have any comments available to us from engineering to tell us why that might be. And we weren't able to reach them today because um, as we all know, there's a snowstorm going on and there's a lot of things heading out with the town with handling that. So a couple of the things that are different um, from the drawing, the hand rendering that I had done. I do notice that in the, um, in the town engineering um, drawing, there are again, four handicapped spaces that are located near the park. We had actually requested to have two handicapped spaces there and two handicapped spaces that were um, near the other um, parking closer to the gazebo, but not parallel to the beach, actually within the parking. Um, so I do recognize that that is a difference that we'll be asking them about. Um, the other is that there um, is a difference in the entrance um, right now, that there is an entrance um, that's listed on the engineering drawing that is right near um, the handicap parking, uh, right there. And the actual hand um, draft that we had done would be an entrance that was coming from the main parking area. So that is a difference. I do recognize that. The other is that there's a still a difference of um, the handicapped accessible picnic table on the engineering drawing that is um, being placed closer to the beach 
and we had requested to have a pod available for a handicapped picnic table within the actual park itself. So that is an item that we'll be discussing. Um, and then also that there are two now entrances um, and we had, we had talked about having one, but there is a gate um, that is um, on the far side away from the parking, um, right near, um, I guess near the, uh, the management building or the, the building that's on the other side there. There is currently a gate there now. And so they did not want to close a gate that was already there, I think is what the answer is. But yes, there is a difference there and we'll need to get clarification from engineering on that point um, because we do. Um, so recognizing that there are some differences, um, I don't know why they were placed the way that they were, but we certainly will be updating with engineering um, to be able to find out what the differences are. Um, so that being said, um, are there any other differences in the rendering or questions concerning other than those that we have mentioned? Any questions concerning the um, engineering uh, drawing that we have um, that was sent out um, from any of the commission members? Lynn, can I make some comments before oh, questions sure. are entertained just to, on the, on the uh, plan? So as you all know, we, we just got this back in this afternoon. Christina just sent it to you as soon as she got it. We were not able to speak with anyone in engineering, obviously, because they're involved in the, um, the town's snow event this evening. So we, there, there, were, there was no one down there to talk to. We would certainly like to talk to them because we had a couple of questions as well. I mean, I know one of the things that they're trying to accomplish is they would like to keep the accessible table on the um, beach side as well. And they're trying to, to make sure that there's a connecting path from that area over to the, not only the, the parking lot, but also to the playground. So I know that's what, why they were trying to consider continuing in that, um, you know, the way they have it laid out here. They also would like to, um, there is a gate on the other side closest to the building and an entrance right off of Sapper Street. There's a second gate. So they do wanna have that as an accessible location as well. And that's why they also have the accessible path that goes clear out to that other side. Um, I had gone over, uh, Rob and I were over there a couple of weeks ago. Um, Rob Millette from BEMA, looking at the drawing and this. One of the other things I realized that I don't know if people are forgetting about, where they put the handicap spots, the four spots over here, um, whenever there's um, parks and rec activities going on, they bring their truck with their trailer, you know, the big trailer that they have with all their equipment in it, gets parked right there because they use that grass area to load up for like grills when they're doing barbecues, you know, on cleanup days and stuff like that. And I don't know if that's gonna, if this design will pose an issue when they're bringing that, um, the caterers are sometimes parked over there and others. And I mean, if it's accessible parking, they're not gonna be able to use that, but is there other appropriate spots with the layout or should we look to move two spots in this parking lot closest to where the existing curb cut currently is and forget about that whole area just to free it up for when any larger vehicles are there for town events? Well, the thought is still to see if we can, and when we're able to talk to the town engineer, move two of the spaces over close to the gazebo in the parking lot area that you right. proposed last time. Yeah. But we weren't able to talk to them to see what their thoughts were in placing the four spots there. So that's obviously still on the table. Yeah, I think that we need to, we need to discuss this. I think this would go to Chris Griffin. I mean, this is something that I think um, Nelson would have spotted immediately as an issue because they always park their... Um, trailer right there whenever there's been an event um it's just got the good width and it's the caterers whenever they've got the concerts at the lake the caterer parks in that spot um for people to go get food and i feel like the flow of things for actual events occurring this might be a an issue because of the size of some of these vehicles however yeah, well, yeah, if they're parking for a picnic, they're going to want the stuff there. I was like, a caterer might be able to pull up along the front where the current accessible parking is, those three spots in front of the beach. Um, that could work for a caterer, but I don't think it would be ideal if they're setting up a picnic in the grass. So my question would be, um, I guess we would need to discuss not only with engineering where do we want to have those spaces but also it would be parks and recreation to find out from them what are their needs 
as far as being able to have events and where would they like to be able to park? Are they simply putting it there because it happens to be there or um, would they prefer or would they be able to utilize other spaces? So um, I think what we would want to do then is probably question amongst the, the commission, if we, if we, which is preferable to us to keep two spaces as it is in that drawing here, like take out two spaces, but keep them in the place right there or is it more desirable for us to have two spaces um, closer to the entrance that is there now? If, if the number one choice would be to keep it where they are and then just to take two of the spaces and put it over, then we have to ask Parks and Rec, what do you wanna do? Um, is it second choice or first choice just to, to say, put two spaces closer to the front entrance? So I guess what I'd be looking for is opinions from the um, commission as far as what do you guys think about that? I, oh, I'm sorry, we definitely need to get them split. I'm thinking like you're going to have a lot of seniors want to go sit under the gazebo but um, or just people with disabilities just wanting to go to the beach versus the playground. So I think it definitely needs to be two and two. It's just about where do we put the two over in the playground area? Can we relocate them to the edge of the parking lot and bring the curb cut over to approximately where it currently is, you know, and have the path of travel from there. Um, I see what they're doing with the connection to the picnic table in the sand, though. Um, Rob and I were also looking at the bathroom access and where access routes for that would be. The bathroom would be located. Is everybody familiar where the bathroom is, or do you need me to? I'm not familiar with it. Okay. So the bathroom, do you see the building in the back where Bima is? And then all the way over to the left, um, it gets a little narrower. On the front side is the men's room. On the back side of this woman's bathroom. And okay. um, so people would have to go that far to get to the bathroom. Um, there's a patch of grass on a little bit of a hill. Um, because we were looking at that, wondering about a, if, a, if a walkway came out the backside to connect to walk straight over to the bathrooms from there, that could also connect to the concrete walkways in that angle. There's one on the backside. Um, yeah, but this is what we're kind of talking through the dynamics of um, in that space. Um, because I think bathroom access is also critical to factor in. I, I agree. I think that we need to make sure that we have some bathroom access. The thing that probably would bring that that handles that with the current design, though, is that they didn't stop or just you know end the the pathway. The pathway that we're that is proposed in the engineering drawing actually goes right through the whole. Um, through the whole park and then comes out where there's a, currently an existing entrance from Safford Street. Um, so I think that that's what they were considering as far as getting to the other side. Um, it brings, that path though brings you to the wrong side of the building and that's what Rob and I were looking at from the distance to walk for somebody who's like ambulatory disabled. Um, would be, it's a lot further to take somebody off that side of the building versus the other. And if we were dependent on a path to swing out at the edge where these proposed parking spots are, the only thing with that would be if town vehicles and um, caterers were to park there, it could actually block the access if that was the one egress off the front side. It doesn't look like, it looks like they, okay, all the way over, let me see, I'm gonna zoom in better. Um, yeah, all the way over towards the right where the path kind of forks off um, towards the parking lot. That does not come all the way back out to the parking lot, correct? Is that what everybody else is seeing? No, the, the one that has the back entrance, that no. path. I'm looking at what the front talking side. about. I'm looking at the front side. Okay. 
actually start at the back side where that back entrance is. Yeah. Follow the line straight down. It slightly yep. curves and then goes forward. But that forward line does not go all the way to the parking lot. Oh, right? That is the that is the um, item that we wanted to have on either side of the swings in order to provide access to the sides of the swings. Correct. I'm thinking we should technically have it connect straight back to the parking lot because of people parking and walking. And that's why I'm like, is that the better access point for everybody and put accessible spots there? But I'm thinking of strollers, um, parents with strollers, because they would have to go all the way around to behind where these cars are parked to access the point for strollers. Because those wouldn't be people coming in from handicap spots in general. They'd be families in a car. So you're proposing that as an alternate entrance that instead of coming where it, we currently are now or from where the two parking spaces are, that we would simply extend the entrance um, near where the swings are? Well, the swings are further back. Well, or no, the swings are that little brown circle. Yes, um, the yeah, the brown circle. I would, I would bring it straight all the way to the parking lot for ease of access for people that are driving in regular cars. Also factor in that not every disabled person uses a placard or they may have a relative drive them. You know, the daughter might be driving grandma. My um, only concern with that is that if we are going to have people that want to be able to access the picnic tables, then they would be going in front of, there would be a large volume of people if that was the main entrance into the park a large volume of people would be walking in front of swings that are potentially swinging. And that might not be the best option to have high traffic coming in. Whereas if you come in where it currently is and the swings are off to your right and this picnic tables are off to your left, then you don't access children running. You have a lot less potential for collisions with the public or handicapped people coming into the park. You know, the more I look at this, the more I, if this is an unfenced playground, has anything changed with the fencing, Mary Beth? No. Okay. If this is unfenced, I have some safety concerns about the parking as demonstrated there, because if people are coming and going at that point, you don't want a kid to come flying out around a car. Right now, you've got good visibility up until because the way the parking lot's laid out, do you know what I'm saying? But I feel like having the car so close there could be a safety issue for little ones. Running across and nobody's gonna see this child. So you're thinking of not, that, that that's not an appropriate place for the handicapped parking to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I'm thinking that like a big van, for instance, could block I mean, a van's going to block the view more than a compact car, but you don't want somebody popping out all of a sudden from around there if that's the forced path of travel between the parking lot and there, um, or there in the lake and have somebody not expect a child to come popping out from behind a vehicle. Um, what about... Um putting some sort of, I know you don't want to do the fencing all over because of, I don't know what the reason was, but what about a fence just where like the, the people would drive and where like a child might run off of a swing just to have like some sort of barrier or something? That's a good idea, actually. Like a one-sided fence just between the you know, just some sort of barrier. They have them all over the place. And I remember when I was growing up, we used to have them. Um, that was way back many centuries ago, but they had them, you know, that it, it can even be like a, a wood fence that somebody can draw a picture on or something to make it seem like it's not just a fence. And so that way maybe it'll stop the kids because to be honest, I don't think a regular um metal fence uh will do it because i think you need something that's a little more structured such as like a picket fence or something doesn't have to be something you know extraordinary it just could be something that a child would see it and a car would see it Oops, sorry and a sign that 
the sign up there that would say, you know, be aware of children crossing, like they have those signs that say deer crossing, you know, for DEAR for seniors and um, just for children. I mean, it's just something simple. Mary, what are your feelings on uh, on what's being discussed? Uh, you, you know, when I, I go back and forth, I think separating the parking spaces is a great idea. Uh, I, I'm definitely in favor of that. Fencing, I know, is kind of a complicated issue. I think that that would, if we had some form of fencing around there, I think that would add a lot of safety to the area. Those, those are my strongest thoughts is some type of fencing, I think, would be needed there if you're going to, you know, invest in all this other stuff. I just think it would be a nice thing to have for safety reasons. Um, so do you think that we should have um, handicap parking currently where it's drawn in the engineering design or would you prefer or do you think that it would be better off to have it um, towards the, the, the end of the rows that are close to the park, but near where the current entrance is? Near where the current entrance is. You'd, you'd think that that would be a prefer, preferable? I, 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 well, yes. Okay. Um, Robin, what about you? Well, I think that near where the entrance is, but also where you're talking about adding maybe two more, put them over near the pot thing, because you know, when you go into a market, you've got handicapped spots, one right near the door, one could be a couple rows down and everything. That way, if somebody doesn't want to park right at the road, wants to park closer to the activities than just the entrance, they have that option there. I mean, what would your thoughts be on just like something small, like a, you know, a three foot fence. Something. That's my, that was my thought, Mary, was like something low, not yeah. like a chain link, but something to slow down people running towards the parking lot and um, especially small people. Um, yeah, I, I think the harder you think, are, the harder it is to see. Yeah, I think that the question about the, we don't quite know the reason behind the fence or no fence. Um, I probably has something to do with maintenance or being able to cut or being able to, to get to items that, that are near there. Um, and again, if we were talking about a fence, what we're doing right now is just deciding on the actual accessible pathway in there, recognizing that if there was a fence or a change in the equipment, that that would be in another phase. Because we, we, while we have to look forward to what's happening in the future, right now we're not able to put something there because, again, we're just taking a look at how, how do we want to have the paths of travel and where do we want them to primarily go to and from. Um, and, and so um, while I'm certainly not opposed to, I, I think that by using the phased approach, it's a nice approach to be able to use and that we always intended to have that without hearing from engineering or knowing exactly why we can't have a fence, I don't know whether it depends whether it's three foot, two foot, four foot or six foot, there may be a reason that we can't put a fence and we just don't know that as of right now without having that information from engineering. Um, I think what we probably want to do right now tonight is consider Crystal's, um, consider Crystal's uh, suggestion and to consider do we want to have the main entrance of the park as it's drawn on this engineering drawing rendering do we want that to be occurring right at the front of the handicapped entrance parking or do we want to try to keep the entrance more where it is right now and adjust where the parking places are i go for the second one only for the fact that when people come in on an entrance they sometimes they don't look and they don't see. And if a handicapped person is trying to get in and out of their car and they're a little slow, uh, you know, somebody could just come bombing in. It's just, I don't know, maybe a couple of spots over from the entrance, not so much at the entrance, you know, because you gotta, you know, not everybody's fast and, you know, somebody might just think, oh, I don't see anybody. I'm just going to zoom down the street and into the parking lot. 
And then you never know, a little kid could be standing there with their grandma and um, it could just be a regular, per uh, you know, a person without a disability standing there, you know, trying to help somebody. Uh, may, I, may I interject here? I know one of the reasons that the um, engineering redesigned this away from where it was the current entrances is because as you can see, that's part of the parking lot. I mean, that's where the travel, the path of travel is for vehicles. And they were trying to make sure there's a distinct separation between where someone's entering and where the cars are and putting it over on the other side of where the handicapped parking spots were, they felt was providing a bit more safety than is currently provided as it is now. I, I could see that. I, my concern is actually with like children rather than like general children, not just children or people with disabilities. Um, I'm just thinking the size of some accessible vehicles is pretty big. What if, if we consider something a little bit a little bit different? We keep the handy the two handicapped spaces where they are rendered in the engineering drawing. Right. However, we do not make the spaces start right next to the entrance. That we leave a space available. Um, so like the width of, I don't know, 10 feet down or something. And so where it's rendered right now to be the four spaces that we're only using the two centers. So you know spaces. what? You know what's the better design here is actually next to where you enter, you do the eight foot access aisle for a van ramp. That would give really good visibility coming out of there. Um, do access aisle before a parking spot and then another parking spot. Yeah. Nope. Essentially, essentially what I was saying was instead of having a parking space and then the aisle, just use the two center parking spaces and the spot that is now rendered as a parking space closest to the walkway, make that not parking, but a hashtag access aisle, a double, a really wide access aisle that will give space to be able to see, still gives two spaces there still allows us to have the travel lanes that are going in front um, at the end of the, the regular parking aisles. And then we still take two spaces and put them over by the gazebo within the lined parking places. Right, um, uh, when I said perfect. van access aisle, van access aisles are eight foot wide, um, car access aisles are five foot. So that would give you, it's literally about the width of a regular spot of space as an access aisle for a van spot and that's, that would be a good eight foot visibility space. Yeah, so essentially we, we, can, we can even make it a little wider if we want to, but we can, what we essentially do is just not make the closest area to the walkway be an actual parking space. That we just make that be um, open space, hash, you know, hash lined kind of thing. Um, and that way we preserve the lane of travel. We still have two and two so that they're still divided. Um, I don't know, what, what do you think, uh, Mary and Robin? Um, what I was gonna say, go ahead, Mary. I think what Lynn proposed is a great idea. I think that that would give a lot of visibility. It's enough space. And I think that's one of the best solutions. And I, I'm on board with that one. I like that. I think that's perfect because, you know, no matter what you do, people just have to realize they have to be careful when they drive in there. And I think for the most part, people are, um, but to doing that type of visibility, whether it's eight feet or 10 feet, I think is, I think that's perfect. Okay. Robin, what do you think? I agree with that too, but I just thought of something where if they, if the engineers don't want to think of a fence as feasible, what about one of those it's not a Jersey barrier. It's one of those yellow post barriers that you see, like if you can't go too far. The Stop and Shop has one right when you pull into the parking lot from um, uh, the street, uh, the Brain to Market, what's that, Liberty Street? You pull in, it's right there after the fence. It's a yellow thing. Just something right there, at, like when the cars come in to maybe make them slow down you know, I mean, 
you know, like everybody says, like, oh, they know to go slow and everything, but there's always just one person. And that's my main thing in everything about, you know, somebody getting hit, a child, especially be it like one with handicaps or without a person, an elderly person, or even somebody that works for the town that just might be over there picking something up. Somebody, it just, that's my biggest fear because you see the way people drive nowadays and it's crazy and like just something, just some sort of protection. But I think where you said to push it away from the main entrance, like the eight to 10 feet is perfect. I agree on that. Okay, and Crystal, what do you think? So um, make it access aisle, then parking, yep. access parking, and then, so we, but the only thing that we would need to do there is to check with parks and recreation to make sure that they have an alternate place to put their van or what it, what it is they use when they have events and make sure that that is not something that's going to get, that, that there's an allotted space for them to be able to do that or a recognized change in the process that they usually have. Okay. So can I ask a question where the proposed main entrance is now next to the four handicapped spots? You wanna take two of the handicapped, the middle handicapped spots out, make those a, like a hashtag um, access point. Where do you want the main entrance? Right there? Well, we, no, we were, we were talking about keeping the entrance where it's listed on the engineering drawing, okay? okay. Yep. If you put the parking space one, that is the closest parking space to the actual entrance, instead of making that a parking place, that would be an access aisle. So that would be drawn out. Then parking space two and parking space three, if you go down the line, they would remain there and parking space four would be gone. So parking spaces one and four as they're rendered right now on the engineering line drawing would be gone. And then the, those two spaces would then go in the lined parking opposite the gazebo as handicapped parking there so that they are not parallel to the beach okay. where they are located now. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah. yeah. So we're, so, oh, sorry. Just double checking with all of the commission members. So we are agreeing to keep the actual entrance to the park as the entrance near what's listed on this engineering drawing. Is that correct? Are you talking about the entrance on Safford Street? No, no. Robin, you have the drawing. We're Excuse talking me? about the entrance that is near in the engineering drawing near the four spaces that is listed right now. If you see that little yellowish square that's right near the what would be the front of the car, that is where you follow the path down and it is right there. That would be considered the current. That would be the considered the entrance, the main entrance to the park. Okay, I always was under the assumption Safford Street was the um, the main entrance. Um. Robin, we're talking about the playground when she says oh, park, not the okay. actual lake. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's okay. I understood what you were talking about. I'm still a foreigner to Braintree. I've only been here for 21 years, you know. <laughs> Mary Beth. That's okay. So do we have, are we, are we all in agreement that we would keep the entrance as the, what we would prefer is for the entrance to remain as the entrance as it is right now on the engineering drawing near the parking places as the main entrance into the playground slash, yes, in, in, the, in the playground area. Is that yes, correct? Yes, yeah. I agree. Yes, as long as it's not prohibitive to equipment. Mary Beth, um, when we mentioned the access aisle, I had specified the eight foot for the van spot closest just for the better visibility versus a five foot. Oh, I'm so, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this over here. So I've got the space closest to where the proposed main entrance is as number one. That's gonna come out and the proposal is that will be the access aisle. Yeah, and that'll be eight foot access aisle. Then a, a van spot and then do another parking spot with an access aisle on the other side. So the two cars would be side by side. Um, so space number two would be the van spot. Yeah. And then next to the van spot, put a, comp a car spot and the access aisle to the left of that one. So it would be two spots side by side with access aisles on the opposite sides. That'll just free up more space. Um, visibility space is what I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. So we have so we have an agreement on the entrance as long as 
Parks and Recreation agree with that. We've got the entrance where it is, two parking spaces there, two parking spaces in the, um, in the, hash, in the lines there. Um, so then my question is, what do people feel about, um, about the path, the actual directions and where the pathways are within the park? Do you feel that they access the park, the playground area well? Do you think that there should be a different, um, a different spot? Um, and um, if we have that entrance where it is now, and there's that little section of pathway, do we want the handicap picnic table to be towards the parking lot side or towards the park side of that little path? If people understand what I'm saying. I'd say the park side. I'd say the park side too. Okay, Crystal, what do you think? Park side or parking lot side? Uh, the path, when you say, wait, can you repeat that? Yep. So we're having, we want to have a handicapped accessible picnic bench. Oh, the bench, yes. There, right. So if we were to do that, the where the picnic benches are is as you come into that main entrance that is now near what the engineers had has put near the parking places as you come in that little that little uh short pathway there do you want the handicap the the, the concrete platform or the platform for the um picnic table to be towards the playground side or in that area towards the parking lot side in the area of the trees Playground side or parking lot side? Playground side, she said in the area near the trees. Okay, cool. All right, so we got that. So so we that's where we'll we'll shoot for the for one of the handicapped um, or the accessible the accessible picnic benches. Um, so now what do people think about the actual progression of where the actual pathways go? Um, is it do, is there a change that you'd like to see in where the pathways go, or do you think that they access the playground area well? Um, Does anybody, did, did Crystal, do you want to to make a comment, or uh, Robin or Mary? As long as it's accessible for people to get around safely, the way you have it is fine with me. Okay. Uh, Crystal, any I, comments on the, the, the actual where the pathways are? Yeah, one of the things I see is um, the benches around the playground. Um, I don't think they're on a path, um, and they're currently sticking out of the, the cement slab they're on is sticking up out of the ground as a tripping hazard. Um, so that might need to be mitigated when the path is put in. Does that make sense? So there's two so on the back side towards the BEMA building, two benches. Um, I don't know if that weird rectangular thing in the play area, if that's a bench, I can't tell from this blurry drawing, um, but there is one in approximately there. And then there's one over a little bit more. Um, and I think we just need to make sure that there's easy access to get from there. And the benches should not be surrounded by wood chips. So remember when you're talking about like little pods, I feel like we need a pod off for a bench, at least one bench. On the back side. Um, do you have a, um, so you'd like to have, where on the path or off of the path, would you like to have a pod for a bench? Well, I think there needs to be a bench pod facing the playground for somebody to supervise a child. And which portion of the path would you like to have that on? The back side near um, where Bima is, is where the two existing benches are. So I'm thinking that one of the two should have an accessible surface around it, not wood chips. So the, um, so the part of the path that has, that's sort of like an angle that's coming yep. from the entrance to there, to yep. have a small pod coming off of that that can be for a bench. Yep, to accommodate an existing bench is my thought. Okay, we can make a note on there and see what we can do there. Other than that, do people think that the actual direction of the pathway and where the pathway is, is um, agreeable? 
Well, Lynn, right now I can't look at it. Um, I've been kind of going back and forth, but Ashley's taken over the computer, so I'm unable to kind of look at exactly how the pathway, but my trust in, goes into the engineer, and I think they kind of know best and how the traffic is going to go. So I'm really trusting in, you know, what they've imp implemented. Once I can look at it, I can send an email and see if I, you know, I feel like any other changes, but I kind of trust what, what they implement just because I think they know it a little bit better than I do. That's for sure. Okay. Um, and uh, so the other thing then, if we, if we keep the path approximately the same, the other item to just quickly discuss is to find out, um, I do know that they put in saying that this was going to be um, in asphalt, um, in asphalt, uh, they, they estimated by saying that it was going to be um, asphalt, I believe, or did, did it say, is this, um, well, let me ask you, Mary Beth, um, when we have the cement concrete um, sidewalk and um, all the things as far as the improvements estimate, is that including the path that is within the um, within the playground, or is this just the, the pathways and the things near the handicap parking? It's my understanding it was all. That's what we asked for. So it looks uh, like the actual material that we had asked for was the stone dust, I believe. That's the bituminous. I don't know what the word is. Concrete sidewalk. So that's the concrete side. Okay, so that's all the concrete side, which is actually it's stone dust. dust. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep, that's the, the scope of the work. If you see where it says scope above it, it talks about approximately installing approximately 425 feet of asphalt walking paths through the playground. Right. So that's what made me a little bit concerned because one place says the bit, uh, bituminous side concrete sidewalk, and they, but it does say asphalt walking path. So I'm not sure whether they said asphalt walking path because they just said asphalt walking path because that's the first thing that came out of their mind or whether or not they actually thought stone dust but said the different thing or whether they are making it an asphalt because there's a reason that we can't have stone dust there. Right, and again, these are questions, very good questions and ones that we were wanting to ask today, but um, when we tried to contact engineering, unfortunately, they're already out involved in the snow um, event. Googling it. I do want to mention to people that if it is the case that we talk to engineering and we find out that for whatever landscape engineering or for whatever purpose that it needs to be a firmer surface or it can't be the stone dust, what we can do is um, say, yes, well, it, it certainly can be an asphalt path, but that rather than having it raised, that the top of the path needs to be at grade with the, with the grass and that we might need to recognize that for whatever reason engineering wise, we might not necessarily get the same path material that we initially had um, anticipated. So I did wanna just bring that up so that we know that that's a possibility. We can't necessarily solve it tonight. Um, and, but I just wanted to let people know that that's a recognized item and that that will be brought up with engineering. Right. Okay. And I know um, when they put this together, they were thinking not only to try and accomplish what you're proposing, but also long-term maintenance and durability of the, the uh, walkway. Okay. Um, a couple of things. I Googled the term that they used and it says sometimes it's mistakenly used to describe asphalt. Um, I'm pretty sure they're referencing a stone dust. I have stone dust at my house if anybody wants to come see. Um, I am, if they're doing actual asphalt, the um, walkway that they put into Charlotte Rose playground from the tennis court area um, behind town hall the asphalt is much higher than the ground. It's a really hard area to access because it drops off. Yeah. And then when it leads to the playground, it leads to wood chips. And I can't use the walkway to actually access the wood chips because they compress. And then it's like a big drop off for a wheelchair 
So the way that walkway was done is not actually accessible with the wood chips. If it was leading to right. another solid surface, it would be fine. So we need to make sure that transitions work appropriately. Right. And that's that's something that that we want, wanted to make sure that we knew um, and that we mentioned to that and that if it needs to be an asphalt for whatever engineering reason, that we need to make sure that the asphalt is not raised, but that the top of the asphalt is actually at grade with the other items. So they would need to actually like dig down a little bit to make the asphalt so that the top of the asphalt is level with the uh, is level with the grass. So that's something that we can't really we know that it's an issue. It's not really something that we need to necessarily discuss in depth tonight because until we find out from engineering what is um, the surface that they're intending, et cetera, et cetera, we could be you know, discussing it all night long and we might not have what the engineers are thinking of. Oh, exactly, I just wanna make um, sure that when yeah. Mary Beth takes it back to them that they're aware of the um, height differences, I could go meet anybody at like Sunset Rose or Sunset Lake, not Sunset Lake, um, Charlotte Rose Playground is a good spot to show them how that negatively impacts accessibility um, when it was installed by request of the commission for accessibility. Um, so I can go, I can go show that if they need somebody to actually see it with. Um, other than um, Charlotte Rose, are there any other parks that we have similar issues with? Yeah. Um, every park, but Charlotte Rose is a good example because it's asphalt. Um, the Highlands Playground has rubber walkways, and again, the it doesn't transition down, so you can't really get into the wood chips and back up to the walkway. You can only stay in a walkway, which is problematic if you're trying to go approach a child. If you're an adult with a disability or a kid who sees a friend, they have to stay only to a walkway. Um, in that case, the walkways leading through wood chips end up covered in wood chips, um, which is another type of an access barrier. Um, but it doesn't look like we're bringing the walkway through the playground. We're bringing it around the playground here. Um, I apologize just because I can't see it now. How wide will the path be? Oh, that's a good question. I'm assuming three feet. Three feet. Lynn, you're muted. Lynn? <laughs> there we go. I, there my, go. My cursor keeps moving. Um, I believe that the path needs to be at least 36 inches wide. Were we thinking of anything a little bit wider than that? I think four feet would be nice. Yeah. You want to get people around each other. Um, that was an issue at the lake. That's when I took Kristen Zicello out there um, because the one single path there was three feet, the one leading from like to the bathrooms um, out to the one original concrete pad um, and nobody could pass each other on the path whenever the concerts were happening. There was a lot of seniors and um, people with disabilities attending the Tuesday night concerts. And so you get like walkers and roll eaters and they couldn't get around each other with the roll eaters, which is actually a bigger barrier than wheelchairs to many dynamics because I can kind of go off it as long as the transition is smooth, but it's harder for somebody to push a walker on two different surfaces at once than a wheelchair. So since we're in the design phase, would we like to request something to be a little bit wider than a standard? Do we want to say four feet? We do need to recognize that if we do that and the estimate has been made with a three feet width, we could be substantially increasing the cost of the project. But if that's something that we want to have, we can certainly go ahead and request that. So what do people think? Do you want to go with something that's approximately three feet wide? Do you want to go three and a half feet wide? Do you want to do 42 inches? Do you want to do 48 inches? What do people think as far as the width of the path? I think 48. Um, because of the fact, like Crystal said, two people can't pass each other. But what if you're going down the pathway and all of a sudden, oh, I want to turn around. Three feet, you can't turn around. Right. Four feet, you'll be oh, yeah. able to move around a little That's, bit better. Yeah, you need a, a turnaround would be a five by five. Um, yeah. For ADA compliance. Um, I'm looking at rollators widths. I know my wheelchair is 28 inches i'm assuming greg must be about the same width actually no greg's wheelchair would be wider than mine so let me think greg do you know your wheelchair width random question i know i'm sorry greg um he'd probably be more like a 32 because he's in a manual wheelchair with the wheels to the side um 
So if we're talking three feet, that's way too narrow for anybody to get around anybody else. So if you've got like a five feet might be the, we need five foot points to be able to bypass each other. It doesn't have to be everywhere. It's just kind of like a rotary circle, like how you have a yeah. rotary circle. So yeah, I mean, we're going to have around. Little, um, areas off of it. Um, if you take yeah. a look at the original um, at the original rendering before engineering got to it, we did have several places where there was a turn that we did widen it up to be able to have a turning radius available. Um, so when they connected the um, when they connected the, the walkways, they tended not to have that, but I would think that that would be simple enough to add um, at the junctures. So certainly um, when Safford Street comes in, there is a wider area there. And I do believe that there's a bump out when you have, as you come straight along the fencing, uh, the uh, Safford Street ride, there is a bump out when with the other path matches. So it does look like they have put a bump out um, or a turning radius area where the different lines of the path have intersected. I guess what we want to make sure of right now though, is to ask, we want to do a 48 inch that then has a 60 inch um, turning radius um, when, when the paths meet. Do we want to do a 42 inch? What width do we want? If we're hearing that we want to have a 48 inch with a five foot turnaround at junctures or do we want to do um, something narrower? I think the 48 with the five. I, I think 42 would even be sufficient. But, you know, once again, I mean, if we get Estimates, or we talk it over with engineering and see what they feel is best. But I think 42 would be an upgrade. Wait a minute. I think ADA, I think it can narrow to 36 inches, but I think 48 inch. Um, we can double check with, um, with engineering. We can ask them for 48. Um, with a five foot turnaround, uh, 60 inch radius on a turnaround or an intersection of two different paths um, and certainly get an estimate as far as that goes. I don't know what width that they were, um, what they were anticipating when they gave the estimate. So let's all just realize that that may significantly bump up um, the cost of, um, of the project. Okay, I just looked up ADA compliance. It says the minimum width for an ADA compliance sidewalk is, which we'll consider this a sidewalk, um, 36 inches. Um, so sidewalks can be constructed wider than this. If sidewalks are less than 60 inches or five feet across, passing spaces must be constructed at set intervals. Um, okay. So I think that if we have a, a, a bump around or if we have a 60 inch um, at the intersections, we have to consider and realize that this is really not that big of a playground. So even though we're taking a look at it and we go, oh, wow, look at that. It, it's really quite a small space so that I don't think we need any additional turnaround spots on the, on the straightaways other than where um, several, uh, other than where two areas might meet. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and shoot for a 48 inch um, and ask for, um, unless we can, we can ask for a 42 inch with a 60 inch turnaround, or we can go for a 48 inch and ask for an estimate with each of those. Once they plug in the numbers, you know, the math will do it. So I think that that's what we can do um, to, to be able to make a decision on that. And what does everybody think? Try also for 45. It's between the two, because I think the bigger, the better, because I've seen people like in the nursing home, even though they got all that space and they're in wheelchairs, you have a heavy person in a wheelchair that's a bigger wheelchair than the normal standard ADA size, because they do have that. They can't turn around in a 40 to 42 inch space and somebody's going to tip over and go boom. Okay, so we'll we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely consider wider spaces and, and more narrow. We can we can um, you know take a look at that, but certainly have the the turnarounds be um, be a sixty inch radius. Yeah. Um, also, clear airspace needs to be eighty inches above it. Um, free of tree limbs would be the barrier that we would run into there to just make sure that the trees are not where you have an duck to go under stuff. So. Um, they did cut down some, a few trees. I think four or five got cut down from that last windstorm over there. So there's big stumps in the ground at the moment. And I, I think, you know, again, that's that's up to uh, to engineering to, I mean, certainly they have to be aware 
Um, right now, as far as um, our path, we're going to try to make the path where it makes it most accessible to being able to be functional within the playground, and then um, and then we'll work on the airspace above once we um, right. once we determine where the uh, where the walkway is. Um, so what we've decided is to, we recognize that there are certain things that are, that are different between the rendering and the engineering. We're gonna be taking a look at the uh, parking places. We're going to keep the entrance as it's, um, as it's rendered in the engineering department. Um, we're going to check on the pathways to make them a little bit wider or make sure that we know the width of the pathways and making sure that there is a 60 inch turnaround on that. Um, we're tabling the talk on specifically a, um, a fence as of this point, because that's a really a different phase, but we are designing this with the hope that there will be able to be some type of barrier at some point in the future. Um, we are moving two of the other spaces over by the gazebo. Um, and I believe that that may be the issues that we have to address as far as the pathway. Does that make sense? It does. Can I add, Lynn, you had mentioned that you wanted to have a handicapped picnic table on the playground side and on a pad near the main entrance. Is that still? Yes, we still want to have a, 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 an accessible picnic table on the playground side of the path that comes from the entrance in towards the playground. Okay. Any other items that we need to add at this time to the rendering um, to be able to get a, um, an updated engineering, um, engineering drawing and estimate? Can I just ask a favor when you send the rendering drawing, can you mark it with the streets? Because I, I'm getting really kind of confused and I don't want to seem stupid all the, altogether. I know where the Safford Street entrance is and I know where the other part, like up on Pond Street, but to be honest, I, I still cannot figure out where that other spot is. I'm just trying to go by what the, the map that you did. So if you could just mark a street for the entrance that you're talking. Okay, you, so you're, the, oh. the, the street on the engineering drawing, so this drawing that you see. Okay. The bottom here. Right is Safford Street, correct? Okay, that's fine. Yep. Okay. And then these two big white areas here and here are the actual lake. Okay, that's, I wasn't quite sure. Thank you for letting me know on that. No <laughs> Sometimes maps can be a little disorienting because you always picture a place the way you walk into it. And right. sometimes that's not how they map, they end up on the paper. So, um, so it can be a little bit confusing. Um, any other items that people want to, um, to mention or place into the engineering drawings before we, uh, before we move on from the engineering drawings? Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, Mary Beth will we'll bring those um, to engineering and see what happens with, uh, with getting an, a, a rendering back. Um, and those were the two big things, the finances and the continuation of the Sunset Lake update and drawings. Those are the two big items that we have um, on the agenda to be able to discuss. Um, and I know that we um, had questions um, on other meetings for something um, that we wanted to have somebody come visit. Um, I can't remember quite what it was. Um, Mary Beth, like, you? Yeah, you'd like to have engineering come back and revisit the upgrades to the South Braintree Square um, lights, stoplights, and so forth, the, the traffic signals. So, and they were planning to do that. They, they, I know I mentioned last time that we were here that they had just, they were still finishing up that project. And it's my understanding that they're coming close to its completion and wanted to make sure they were working out all the kinks before they came back. So it's my hope that at the March or April meeting that we can have them, we can invite them back. Um, side note, if we move parking, um, if we move two spots to the main lot, we reduce two concrete wheel stops as well. Just that's a $500 expense. Right. It's it. Well, yeah. When we when we move the, the spots over, yes, there's going to be adjustments again to the estimate because they're going to need to. Uh, they're going to be grinding or adding or th there's going to be stuff that they do as far as doing those kinds of things. It certainly is going to change the the amount, but um, they're going to have to redo the entire estimate anyway. So um, those things I'm certain will get added in when they realize that we change the drawings there. 
Are there any grants available to assist us with this project? Well, I know that Christine is always looking for grants. We haven't come across anything right now, but it's still, we're still in the winter time. So I don't know if that plays a factor. And plus, besides the fact, I know that the state's really kind of buckling down on a lot of the grants that uh, were available because mm -hmm. revenues aren't coming into the state like they were. So um, we're always on the lookout for them, but um, we'll take what you have offered and bring it back to engineering. Obviously, they're going to be putting together a new estimate based on upon what the commission would like to is proposing. And you have several different options, like for example, the 42 inch pathway with the 60 inch turning radius and or a 48 inch pathway with 60 inch. So we'll ask them to put together a couple of different estimates so that you have something more to look at. Um, also, um, Robin, around grants, I think that if we're going to have better success with a grant, we would be better off using commission funds for this saying we've made this improvement and we want to take it to the next step. Can you help us? But if you have something to show for what you're working on that you've already done, um, you're more likely to get a grant if you've got progress already underway. Sounds good to me. All right. Very good. Um, so is there any other, um, those are the items that we have on the agenda. Are there any other items that somebody would like to have added to the agenda for the next meeting? Just the notes to get them approved. Oh yeah, right, right. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have the minutes of the meeting there. Um, Mary, anything else that you would like to have added? No. Okay. And Crystal, anything else that you would like to have added? Um, I had asked a couple of times about the results of the street scan when they sent the robot around. They did um, press releases that it was happening, but they never brought the commission the results from 2018. Okay, and that's an in, that's a, a department of um, highway department. No, or the, street the, Remember the street scan. Kristen Zachalo was telling us that they were doing. Right, it was engineering. So well, I'll have to coordinate with the um, engineering department and our, our chief of staff town solicitor and find out what the status is of it. Okay. Um, one more thing. What about um, any new members for our commission? Anything the, on that? Mayor Kokoris is aware that, um, you know, there are positions available. So I, I've made him, I continue to remind him of that. <laughs> so, I mean, I, he will make a decision when, you know, yeah, I know. So when he'll he, let when me know he when he's made a decision. Okay, great. Thanks, Mary yeah. Beth. He is reminded, though. <laughs> okay. Um, if we don't have any other um, other items, then what I would do is to um, ask for a motion to dismiss um, or to, to finish the um, Commission on Disabilities, uh, Disabilities meeting for Monday, February 1st. Do I have a motion? Wait, I make a motion. Wait. Can I? Who, who made the motion? Was it Robin? Robin. Robin. Yes. Okay. Um, can we allow public comment? We haven't in several months. I don't know if anybody. Unless public it. comments on the agenda, then we cannot um, provide for public comment. Okay. Okay. Can we have? Um, do we have a second mo A second for um, finishing the meeting for February first. Second. Okay, a second. And all in favor, um, we do have the verbal. Yep. Who did the second? Crystal or Mary? We Crystal, both did. Crystal. We both did. <laughs> so let's go, okay. let's go with a verbal on um on acceptance. So Crystal, wait, do you accept? Wait, yes. wait, wait, wait. and then Robin. I I I, I do yes. can and we Mary? put public comment on the agenda for the next month's meeting? And um public comment regarding an item that is on the agenda. No, if, what if the public has something they'd like to bring to the commission? The public is always welcome to call the commission and in, in, on our hotline, are they not? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but they might like to bring something or say something about something we're discussing. That can all be filtered through our office and we can bring it to the commission's attention. So if anyone has any comment they'd like to make or something that they'd like to bring to the commission's attention, they can send an email to me and then I will forward it to the commission. And then if it needs to be placed on the agenda, it would be. Okay. Okay. Um, and then Mary, do you have a, um, do you uh, agree to a, a, a second, the second motion for uh, finishing the meeting? 
Yes, I do. Okay. And then um, and Lynn Valencourt also. So that is a, um, a fin uh, the Commission on Disabilities meeting from Monday, February 1st is adjourned as of 7.35 um, p.m. And, um, and we'll see how everything goes for the next meeting. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Everybody you. be safe. Yes, be safe. No driving. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.